This is a close-up of my narcotic stage. We have the interphase cells once again. This is G1, S, and G2 phases. This is what the cell looks like. This is the prophase where the chromosomes are starting to condense. Well, actually, the chromosomes are beginning to form. The DNA is starting to condense onto proteins which form the chromosomes. So they are highly organized package genetic material. Then it goes to the metaphase where they line up at the center of the cell. Now, when I said the cells, the, the DNA duplicated itself, if you look here, you see each chromosome look like, like sort of a pair of scissors, if you will. Normally speaking, you would only have that's really hard, one of these in the interface cell. So instead of having an X, you just have one line. And that's one chromosome. That's normally the way it occurs in the body. You have two copies of those. But when it's ready to divide, that chromatin duplicates itself. And it's during these times where you also have a lot of errors that can occur. And it's at these stages where you can find problems occurring, and that's where you have the genetic rearrangement. At this stage of uh, the prophase, the metaphase, and even the anaphase. And in anaphase, sometimes what happens is these do not segregate evenly because what happens from metaphase to anaphase, anaphase, the chromosomes go to two different poles and separate evenly, so you have equal number of genetic material in each cell. Sometimes you have what's called anaphase lag, which will be explained later, that all the chromosomes don't move to one side. So one cell has less, and the other cell has more genetic material, causing, once again, chromosomal alterations. And it continues until the cells divide into two. And this keeps on going until this, this cell decides to get signal say no longer have to divide, go into G1, and then just function as a cell. You all good so far? And at this stage here, the metaphase, like I was saying about the cosmet, is the cosmet is acting right here at this stage, which will disrupt all of these spindle fibers, which no longer goes to anaphase. So the cell does not begin to divide, and the chromosomes stay in their sister chromatic configuration, the X configuration, instead of this one, I guess called the B configuration, which would be one copy each. So, after we stop it at that phase, we'll put it on the slide, we'll get down saying, this is literally what we see. We have a bunch of squiggly looking worms sitting on the side, and we're supposed to make heads or tails out of it. How do we do that? Well, we have programs that actually allows us to cut these apart and place them on a form called a karyogram, creating this karyotype. And what we do, the banding pattern for each chromosome is unique. So, we look and try to match up each pair of chromosomes. Now, as I was saying before, this looks like chromosome 1. This is chromosome 1. You can't appreciate it, but this is actually two chromatids stuck together. So there are actually four copies of chromosome 1 here. If this had gone through anaphase, this would be split in half, and so with this down the center, go to different poles. You have to also uh, appreciate that each chromosome will get one from the mother, one from the father, from your father. So this is how it's controlled. And all this genetic material is necessary. You don't need two copies of the material and paternal in the cell during normal function. But you do need it when it's about to divide and duplicate itself. Okay. Now, this is a normal female character. Now, you know that because it has two X's and no Y. You can see the Y is empty. Normal female. Now, let me just do a quick review here of um, the chromosome function and um, setup. Normal karyotype, like I said, is the same in all humans. Everybody has the same amount of chromosomes and they all look alike. There's no difference from person to person or ethnicity. They compose an organized strand of DNA coiled up into histones or protein complex which forms the chromosomes themselves. There are 46, 23 you get from your mother, 23 you get from your father. 
X always comes from the mother because the woman has two axes. Hence, 46 XX. The Y is always from the father. The father has one X, one Y. So, during fertility, depending on which sperm is fastest, you can either get a daughter or a son. This is sort of the father's um, fault. Sort of. Not exactly. But that's a different nature. Um, each chromosome has a, uh, like I said, this unique recognized G-band pattern. You have a short arm and a P arm. The top of the chromosome is called like the, the short part, the short P arm, P for petite, and the long arm is called the chew arm. Centromere is where they are bound together, the P and the Q. And each band is identified with a designation like P12, Q2, Q2, we used to identify the specific regions which is on the chromosome. So if you want to know where a gene is, we would say the gene is located at a specific band designation. So here go. Oh, and yes, forgot to tell you, they are set up in pairs. They're labeled chromosome 1 to chromosome 22 and the X and Y. 1 to 22 are called autosomes. Everyone has the same autosomes, there's no different. The sex is determined by the XX and the XY. Those are called the sex chromosomes. 